What's going on guys? Welcome back to my second dojo. This week we're going to do the Zwei Hander. We're still doing uh, mostly invasion focused uh, PvP. This is a low level 40 character. And uh, we're on our way to uh, talk about the Zwei Hander. I hope you guys enjoyed that video that I put together for you. I've been PvPing with the Zwei Hander for I would say about three days now and like a three hour stints. Got a good three three hours stints in so a good nine hours with this weapon and uh, let me tell you that this weapon is awesome I really enjoy this weapon this is going to be in my uh, pocket for a long time as a weapon that's gonna be a go-to it's just so freaking long and it also has great cleave like you can attack in front of you and then switch the other way and then attack behind you so you can really bait people out a lot I've also found that uh, if you have around 25 poise with this weapon, you will get through a lot of attacks. And uh, it has worked very well for me. I don't know if you could tell in the video or not. I was kind of trying to showcase a little bit how a lot of times either just this raw dead angle is good at roll catching and it's also good at uh, poising through things. And not to mention the fact that uh, all of your rolling attacks, both rolling R1s as uh, one-handed and two-handed are stab attacks so if you do like to use the Leo ring it's good for you I personally have found using the Havel's ring, the Fap ring and of course the uh, Gundir's ring and the Clorinthy ring are the best for me because I can get my poise limit and carry a shield because I am a dirty parry fisher but we're gonna see if we can get some invasions usually all day all not all day the last three days I've been having a lot of luck here we're gonna go somewhere else. I'd like to just continue to talk about this weapon a little bit and hopefully showcase a little bit more live why I think this weapon's so good. As we travel here from place to place, uh, where should we go? Where's another place that I've been having luck? The dungeon has been semi-lucky for me lately as far as getting pops goes. Uh, let's talk about three strengths of this weapon, three major strengths. I would say one is its range. It's extremely long. Two is the fact that it just has a good move set. You have your cleaves, you have your pokes, you have your slam down. You also have a really solid weapon art. This will hit multiple people. You will poise through hella shit with that weapon. So the move set is great. And uh, I would say the third biggest plus about this weapon to me is the fact that it has relatively low weapon like stat requirements 19 strength and 11 decks so it's really good if you're trying to go heavy in strength and avoid having to put points into decks so I uh, could not recommend this weapon enough I've really fallen in love with it over the last few days it actually was hard for me to put it down and sit down and edit the video because I had so much fun with this weapon now uh, what am I doing here let's see if we can get an invasion maybe get some live commentary like I was saying about this weapon now what I will say or maybe some you know what? I'm going to add a fourth positive to this weapon. I, maybe I shouldn't do that, but a fourth positive is uh, something I talked about earlier. This thing roll catches so well. It's so long, and if you can... I mean, that whole, like, 300... Not three, 270 degree arc in front of you and around you, it is just a huge bubble of damage. And uh, I've had a lot of success with this weapon. It's great in 1v2 scenarios, which is what you end up in in a lot of invasions. And... Uh, Let's see what we can get out of this invasion here. Hopefully we can get... Hopefully I don't just blow it for you guys. I uh, Last week was rough losing all that footage. This week I actually had not only a lot of luck with my footage, getting good clips, getting a lot of wins, but I also have figured out how to record in the best possible quality that I can. So that has me pretty excited. So right now we're just going to follow the body trail and see. These people are either progressing through the level and being confident or they probably ran all the way back to the beginning oh hey what up Dorito now you can see on buff my damage is not insane I guess it's a good chance to showcase it but with a buff on my weapon it really starts to pick up but it's not always about having the most damage it's about having the right moveset and being something that you're comfortable with now this that now you couldn't see that it hit for 160 that'll usually hit for around four to five hundred that uh, stomp weapon art to the R2 I will say that the stomp weapon art to R1 isn't I have not found an instance where that has been 
very useful for me. Like if you have the chance to go for the stomp, you're pretty much always wanting to go for that R2. Now that doesn't mean that you should never, never do this one, this, the stomp R1, but uh, something about it, it's just, it doesn't feel any more effective to me than using just the regular old R1, so I don't see why not to go for it. Another thing I've found about this weapon that's super good is, as with most weapons, you can R1 and then go for like a setup parry, like try to uh, bait them into attacking you and parrying them. Something about this weapon, it just works really well, like it just, like, your opportunity to parry after you swing comes in, I feel like, a little bit earlier than some of the other weapons I've used. And uh, this weapon goes really well with a parry shield, but... I guess you could kind of say that about every weapon, but it just it just feels good. It feels good going for the setup parry with this weapon. It feels like it's what, sh it's what the game wants you to do. Now, a lot of enemies are alive right now, which makes me think that they haven't left the bonfire. But there is a good chance that they just ran past all these guys because they're extremely annoying. This is probably one of the worst areas in the game. Everyone hates this area. This sure looks like a chameleon, but it's not. Gosh, every time that those shadows pop out, it always makes me think that I'm getting invaded. And uh, kind of a bummer, I'm not getting a lot of opportunities to get some live commentary in on the PvP. I'm sure we all know how to hunt people down. But I guess I can use this as an opportunity to... Uh, they must have, they must be on their way down down to the profane capital. But uh, let's, let's talk about weaknesses of this weapon. I will say that... Uh, if you don't know how to use the way the semi-working poise in this game works and hyper armor, then you're probably going to struggle a little bit against uh, weapons that can outrange you. Just because you're not, if they outspace you, it's going to be hard for you to connect because it is a little bit slow. It's also very, very easy to parry the one-handed uh weapon that one-handed zweihander zweihander however you would like to say it is very easy to parry so that's something you're gonna have to watch out for this is a bummer we're not getting any invasions right now so we'll see what happens we're gonna black crystal out we're gonna go back to uh back to high lord volnir because i generally have had a lot of success around level 40 with a plus four weapon I've been able to just spam invasions there that's where I've been doing most of my invasions because it's just been one invasion after another which has been pretty cool but as far as other weaknesses for this weapon go it's just like your standard ultra great sword weaknesses like I said earlier though um, it's easy for a fast weapon to get in on you and get out generally uh, sometimes you'll uh, break somebody's shield and you might not quite be able to get in to repost unless you know for sure you're gonna break their shield. Like this rolling two-handed R1, if you can hit someone in the shield with that, oftentimes, like if they've already swung their weapon a couple times, at least at this level, it'll break their shield and you can go in and the guard breaks do do decent amount of damage in this game with these big weapons. But yeah, see, there you go, that instant invasion. This is how it's been lately. But whether or not we get an opportunity to get some good invasions during this time where I'm talking isn't really the key point though it's really just about me sharing my opinions on the weapon and uh, so far we've done the Cathedral Knight Greatsword last week and we did this Vihander this week semi by request and also just because some people said they like it better than the Cathedral Knight Greatsword so I was interested to kind of compare them this weapon is pretty much better than the Cathedral Knight Greatsword in every way in my book as far as just like being well-rounded, having a better moveset, having a better reach, having roughly the same damage. I will say the Cathedral Knight Greatsword does hit insanely hard with the Leo Ring. The Leo Ring Cathedral Greatsword is insane, but it's also pretty good with this if you want to use that. But I've had a lot more uh, fun just throwing on this Havel's Armor and my Havel's Ring and trying to poise through hits. So. Looks like we might be getting into a 1v2. Let's see if I can uh, actually demonstrate some skills. So they're either at the boss gate, which I don't think is the case, or they're at the beginning of the level. If these guys are moving, that generally means they've been sem they've been semi close to down here, but they might have ran back. We'll see. 
I don't think they've been through here. There's not any pots broken. Everyone likes to break pots while they're running around. It's just Dark Souls style. But next week, though, uh, I'm going to do another one of these dojos. I've actually really been enjoying doing these. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a good chance to uh, work on my editing and get better at it. And it's also been a chance to get back into the game. We've got Dark Souls 3 DLC coming up, so we're going to delay the podcast, or the Souls cast, I should say, a little bit this week because we want to uh, we want to talk to you guys about that uh, DLC. That's what we want to make the focus of our Souls cast on this week. So we're going to get this out earlier in the week, and then sometime either tomorrow night, my birthday, which is tomorrow, or Thursday, maybe, maybe even Friday, we'll do our Souls cast where we break down the trailer and every little tidbit of information that we've gotten about the DLC. I'm really hoping that they can uh, broaden the build variety a little bit in this game. The game's still fun, the PvP's still fun, it still looks beautiful, and uh, it's still pretty active most of the time, so that is enough to like make it worth playing and to keep playing this game. But I really, really, just like the rest of the audience, would love for some more build variety. But we'll try for like one or two more invasions here and see what we can do and then we'll wrap it up. Anyone who is still watching, that's so much love. It's uh, literally every single view. I pretty much wake up every morning and check my videos and see. And By my videos, I mean our channel, Next Level X, and I just like to check the progress. I like to see like every single time that someone comments, I get excited. It's awesome. It's such a good feeling. So that little bit, even just like if 20 people watch it every week it's enough to make me want to keep doing these because it's a lot of fun and I definitely would say if you have not tried this weapon try it it is awesome those Vihander rules and uh, we're really not having any luck with these invasions right now which is kind of a bummer so I guess we're gonna call it but oh 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 I spoke too soon let's go see if I have what it takes we've got one more chance here but uh it's most ultra great swords are kind of similar and they're all pretty good in their own way you know so i'm thinking maybe maybe next week we'll do like a great club or something which their great clubs still operate similar to uh to the good old ultra great swords but i want to probably do you know the great club or some kind of club um a few more strength weapons i'll probably respect this character after that and then we'll do some dex weapons for a while and and then we'll just keep going from there. We'll probably go back and forth. And then maybe what I might start doing is instead of doing weapons later on, we'll do builds. I don't know. I'd really like to find these people. The fact that that fireball, or that skeleton ball, I should say, excuse me, is uh, just now rolling generally means that they're at the front of the level here. Um, those guys make me jump all the time. They always make me think, like, I know they're there, but I'm always. it always feels like it's a player for a sec. I don't know. We'll see what happens here. Here they are. Ooh, this is a bad place to be. There's a button on the ground over here. Somewhere. Where did he go? I just saw him, I thought. Am I out of my mind, guys? Am I out of my mind? I must be. It must have been. A, oh, nope. 210. Not bad. Let's test him with the firebomb. Good strategy. Like, if your firebombs hit him for over 100, generally you're going to hit people fairly hard. Like, if you hit people for under 100 with your firebombs, it's generally a sign that they are, were smart enough to invest in their HP. We'll just try to outspace this guy and poke him, finish him off with a firebomb here. It might be a great way to... Sure would like to end with a victory. Yeah, see, just the poise, man. Just, he hit me, it didn't matter. I didn't even feel it. My swing was started, it finished. This weapon is so good. But uh, going out on a positive note, I'd like to, again, thank all of you guys so much for watching. Expect more of these dojos. Any criticism whatsoever is... I, I would love it. Leave it in the comment section. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. And uh, as always, guys, praise that sun, you know?